as we look at the French Revolution spreading and taking over different parts, right? One of the places we looked at is Italy and Germany uh, over the last couple uh, days, weeks. What we're going to be looking at today is the Helvetic Republic, which is essentially Switzerland. So the reason that I think the Swiss don't necessarily receive the the uh, attention that the Italians and the Germans do is it doesn't it, uh, it's a quicker, it's not as uh, acrimonious, it's not as tentious, contentious as the German and the Italian examples are. And also coming later, right, I mean the Swiss are notoriously uh, independent or no notoriously um, neutral in, in the major conflicts that emerge later in the 20th century. So I think as a result of that, we don't necessarily think about the sort of amalgamation and the unity that comes across in this sort of central European area. But the forces that push them are much the same that are going to push those other locations previously noted. So when we look at the Helvetic Republic, right, so the Helvetic Republic is named for the Helveti people who were in antiquity uh, inhabitants across the uh, across the um, the area that becomes Switzerland. Now Switzerland is a very interesting location where today in, in Switzerland, right, there's 26 cantons that make up the country. In these days it was 13 cantons that, that make up this territory. And this area, the Helvetic Republic, ultimately is going to be uh, inclusive of major city-states, Geneva, Neuchatel, and Basel. But it's also going to include Zurich up in the north, and I have a map and a slide or two where we'll look a little bit more at the territory that is include, included. Now, for years, the, um, the Swiss had been, had been able to stay out of major warfare. And the reason for that is because of tensions on either side by the French and the Habsburg lands in general. However, as the French Revolution is going on and the French army is moving, uh, particularly in the late 1790s and into the early 1800s, this is going to start pushing the, the people within the Helvetic, what will become the Helvetic Republic, towards greater unity. So when we think about this territory, right, and this massive separation, right? So the Swiss, uh, so I guess we'll, we'll look at the map for a second, right? I mean, Switzerland, again, is, is quite small. And I'm sure many of you know that Switzerland has the Alps within it. It's a very mountainous region. And at least up here, sort of um, down here in the south. And then it's also mountainous up here in the north. And then you have plains here in, this, in the midsection. Um, as a result of that, right, these, these you know, mountains make it very difficult for communities to come together. So there's a lot of separation within uh, Switzerland and a lot of sort of independence, as I've said, of city-states. And again, as a result of that, you have very unique makeups in these territories. So one of the things that is important, again, to think about here is Switzerland is quite small. In terms of land area, Switzerland is only about two times the size of the state of New Jersey, right? So New Jersey is quite small as in, in terms of geographic region. Uh, and if you think about that, right, uh, Switzerland is, is double that, right? So it's not really a really big area. And there is a lot of diversity within Switzerland, uh, both religious diversity, there is lingui linguistic diversity. As you get closer to Germany, more people speak German. As you are closer to the Italian states, more people speak Italian or, or Italian-esque languages. And as you get closer to France, you get clo more people who speak um, French. So this is a really interesting region where there is a lot of diversity. However, the thing that does make them connected is that they're, that these 13 different cantons have what is called the Eidengosenschaft, 
the oath of friendship, which was there to protect each other, right? So it's sort of a mutual protective alliance where um, they would be, they would again protect <coughs> from external defenses and they would try not to fight with one another. Within these cantons, right, I, I, the way that I think of them is sort of like counties, right? Uh, they're, they're sort of local autonomous regions that set up their own rules and have their own sort of policies and, and sort of govern isolated regions. But within, again, within these territories, you know, there's democracy on a local level, people being able to vote for sort of local office holders. There was a belief, there was sort of a firm belief among the people of Switzerland that, that this was your right, that you had the right to um, practice some sort of, of democratic action. And this is a long held feeling that, that will persist, right? So as we are getting into a thing like the Helvetic Republic that is going to be, um, you know, get in the, in the model of the French Republic, it's going to create an issue where people are going to say, well, that's not a right that we've ever given up before. But there's also within these cantons, in some places, hereditary monopolies that get passed down family to family uh, and uh, or family member to family member and again govern so much area. As you are closer to France, you get more Catholic groups and as you get closer to Italy, you have a lot of Catholics. But then in northern Switzerland, uh, there are Protestants. There are also pockets of Protestantism here in sort of uh, the central area. So you have pr Protestants, Catholics. It's a very diverse region. And these different these different regions also, in some cases, have tariffs across, uh, you know, trying to make money off of the trade. So again, as the French are moving, one of the things that is happening is there's going to be greater um, conflict and there's going to be a draw towards getting into some sort of unification and, and having to respond to the war. So within the Helvetic Republic, there's four levels of sort of what a person might be in terms of a citizen, a bourgeois, a natif, or a sujet. These are sort of four classes, right? The citizens and the bourgeois are the folks who have the sort of highest political status. These lower two, natifs and sujets, have smaller or lower political status. So what happens as a result is as the revolution is spreading, those, those lower groups who hear these ideas of liberty, equality, and fraternity are going to want to achieve that for themselves within their own territories. And that's going to cre create us a push towards greater demo democracy and greater uh, independence from, from these sort of archetypal uh, monarchical system and, 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 and or aristocracy. Within Within the French Revolution, right, as the revolution is spreading, one of the things that doesn't necessarily upset the people of Switzerland too much, unlike what it does in Italy or in other places, is this idea of stripping away uh, religious identity. So for Switzerland, right, there, was, there had always been a sort of religious tolerance particularly stretching back to like the 1500s, right? When and whenever those Reformation figures were looking for a place to run to, they would run to, to Switzerland, right? And as a result of that, what occurs is, um, you know, when, when the stripping of religion happens in the mid 1790s in France and that moves into, that moves into Switzerland, people aren't too, too stuffed. Uh, and then you have sort of local issues, right? In Geneva, the economy is stagnating, so people are not super happy about that. And then you have something called the Staffa Affair, which is where in the town of Staffa, these sort of reading club intellectual societies are suppressed. And that really keeps, again, people think they have, people believe they have um, individual rights, and they, they are being tread on here. Finally, 
1798, the Republic is declared, and it really very much models the connection to uh, the French directory. It is a five-person directory. They are chosen by the Senate. Uh, and they, they're only really in survival here as a republic for about four or five years. And by 1803, the Helvetic Republic has, has essentially dried up. But the, the outcome of this is going to be significant because as we move into the end of the Napoleonic era and certainly by the Treaty of uh, – sorry, the Congress of Vienna in 1815 – there's going to be – there's going to emerge a, a Swiss nation based on the same boundaries that will be applied here. And, and it's also important to notice, right, that the European powers are happy to have that because it gives, again, a protection against France to – it gives a protection against France to the west of Switzerland, uh, which, which obviously Metternich and other leaders of the – of the the post-French Revolution world uh, desired.